Hello, hello. My name is David Ocasio, and today I am going to discuss with you what foster youth need um, and what former foster youth need, and even what um, foster alum, college graduate foster youth, successful foster youth, foster youth in their 30s, uh, early 30s, late 20s uh, need. And so, yeah, I'll just go ahead and get started. I believe that universally, foster you don't inherit things. So, um, sometimes when life gets hard and when everything falls apart and bad breakups happen, people have mothers to go to. They're like, oh, I never liked that girl anyway. But a lot of former foster youth, they don't have... You know, when everything falls apart, you know, they might sleep in a park, they might sleep at the lake, right? So I think that uh, universally people need something, right? They need to inherit something. So a lot of, a lot of people say, <clears throat> I hope you're not suggesting to give the former foster youth anything for free. Well, how much stuff do regular people get for free? Cars on their 16th birthday, 18th birthday is very common in society. That's very abnormal. Uh, for the foster youth demographic. So you guys are over here inheriting a work truck and a trailer and you're wondering why you're never homeless. So if you if you don't get what I'm getting at around here, um, I think that the biggest issue in the foster care community is homelessness. When the girls, foster girls get homeless, things get extreme. When the foster boys go homeless, things get extreme and these things are things that you the average person acts like oh I wish I could prevent those extreme things from happening well what if I just blatantly told you that those extreme things happen because pockets are touching which means there's no wallet in the pocket there's no money in the pocket there's no food in the belly you know it's kinda of hard to remember what the pastor talking about when you're hungry like that when you're angry like that when you're upset like that when your biological family you ain't got nothing for you in moments like that. It's very difficult. So what I'm suggesting is that uh, foster youth should inherit trailers, trucks, trailers, RVs, and vans as a movement. You know, we should have a union, uh, uh, a demographic of people that seeks out people who are ready to drive, drive responsibly, not drunk drive and kill themselves. And, you know, be a responsible vehicle owner. We could go over some road rage, a little assessment, go over their homelessness assessment. And there is such thing as needing a van, needing an RV. You know, I remember feeling like people who could afford a little something not having anything for me was crazy, you know, because I was really like, I have nothing. I have nothing. And so... What I'm doing is I'm, I'm advocating for former foster youth to receive resources from people who help foster youth in the form of trailers, trucks, and vans. So old, but they have to be an inheritance. It should be a foster youth inheritance. Why don't we get anything inherited to us? You guys would rather junk your cars to pick and pull and get $150. How about this? Let's buy cars for foster youth for $100. You already sell your car to pick and pull for $100. Why don't you just give, a, give us cars, pink slips, you know, let us give you little bit to nothing. Same thing that pick and pull offer you, I'll pay that. David Ocasio will pay that. Go get the car, assess that pick and pull, and if it's worth it, we'll find someone to buy it and we can give it to a foster youth and keep him off the streets and keep him from being so hungry that he got to take to eat. Because if he don't take, he don't eat. And the whole sl the slogan in the Bible is that kind of loose that if you don't work, you don't eat. That's all nice and fine until you get fired from a job and you're still Christian and you believe in God, but you don't have no job and you can't eat, you know. So I'm really empathetic to uh, the homeless, you know. But I think that people need angel investors to help them inherit 
vans and trailers and trucks with a trailer on top so they can have jobs and have tools in their truck and go to work and bounce back within a month to 90 days and that's long enough to get on medical at a company and when you're on medical at a company if alcoholism is your problem you could take a step back and go I, maybe I need to go to rehab maybe I just need therapy maybe you're not an addict maybe you just need therapy you know maybe you got suffering from a serious mental illness or medical condition and you literally are just going through life with your medical condition untreated you don't have glasses on your eyes and you need glasses you know you something wrong with your teeth and you're never getting it checked by a dentist because you can't keep a job long enough well I think that that's another thing where people who claim to help foster you should be willing to walk 90 days and another 90 days to help people get through these jobs because what you don't know is in the union, 90 days is kind of in the dope, but it's not until you're six months in that you are uh, certain pensions and certain things really go through. So you really don't have the benefits you think you have until 180 days. So people who have little 90 day support may need to bump that up. Bump up your 90 day support to 120 day support. I mean, 180 day support. You know, spend a thousand dollars on a van for a foster you. Then spend two more things. If you give a kid a thousand dollar vehicle, pay for the insurance for a little bit. And upon paying for the insurance, pay for a, a gym membership. Because, you know, if you got to sleep in that van, at least you can show up to work the next day looking presentable. That's what I embody. If you've seen Pursuit to Happiness, you see a homeless man showing up to work like he needs a promotion. That's called doing the impossible. So in a lot of ways, I've done the impossible. I'm certified. Uh, I am in the Carpenters Union. I was in the uh, cement union. I got a certification in electrical, pre-electrical, HVAC, plumbing. You know, pretty much everything trade school had to offer. What was the other one? Uh, welding. And they all got my name on it. You know, and I'm five, uh, OSHA 510 certified, not OSHA 10, OSHA 30, the 510, okay, I'm OSHA 510 certified, about to be 500 certified, going to be able to certify people. So as I go throughout life, I'm realizing that um, what we need is an opportunity to work, and the opportunity to work comes, it's a little impossible when housing is not realistic. I know something about going through life when housing's not realistic. And when housing's not realistic, you need a safe place to park your car. And if it wasn't for the little $600 car that I bought, my first car, I had $400. My friend let me borrow $200. I bought a car. It was crashed in the back. They didn't get it fixed. That's why it was $600. But the engine was good. So I drove around with a crashed car in the back. My mama kicked me out. I got my car. It's in my name. If I get pulled over and harassed by police, at least they know it's not stolen, even if I don't have insurance. They know it's not stolen. It's in my name. You know, Nipsey Hussle said, whatever's going on with you, money will help. If you can't see your kids, money will help you buy a lawyer. If you can't get your mind off your problems, money will help. You know, if you've got a drug addiction, money will help you go to rehab, get you some money. Anybody that supports foster you, give them some money. But don't just give them some money. Check out the group home story program that I have for kids to lower recidivism, keep kids out of jail, keep kids from being desperate, keep kids working. David Ocasio out. Check out my program. I'm going to drop the, um, just a typed up one pager. And, I, and this is really the heart of it. This is the author of this typed up one pager that the author of group home story is going to pretty much provide. And uh, yeah, let's do it. What's up?